Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Philip Sadiq Show. As you can see, I have a special guest on the show. His name is Anderson Scott, my nephew. Say hi to the folks, Anderson. Hey, I want to Yeah, well, whatever he said, but he said hi. Anyway, he's from Atlanta, fresh. His sister is here, my baby sister, Julie. And it's so fascinating because years ago, she and I had covered a car show in Alameda. And here it is. I have her son, my nephew, on the show. Mm -mm. They say that miracles never cease, right, Mr. Anderson? Yes. <laughs> I love my love, my loving. So, the show we're going to have, Beats, Rhymes, and Life, The Travails of a Tribe Called Quest. We had an opportunity to be invited to a press conference by Michael Rappaport, the director, and Fife Dog from A Tribe Called Quest, and a whole lot more. So, Anderson, tell everybody that we'll see you later. I'll see you later. We'll see you later in the show. It's a later show. Fife, um, during the making of the film, was very um, honest, um, you know, in, in, in regards to his stuff about himself and, and to his feelings about whether it's sports, whether it's, you know, his frustrations within the group. Whether you know he's just unfiltered, um, and and um, he really set the, the tone for that um, off the bat, um, and you know I would show him, you know rough footage throughout, and and I remember the first time I showed him the the now infamous leaked rough trailer, like he was just like I could see how bugged out he was by it, as, as I think anybody would be seeing a documentary about yourself. Um, you know, he, he was really supportive of me as a director, you know, he had thoughts, he had opinions, and, um, you know, and we would talk about them, and, but, um, you know, he was sort of fearless in terms of, like, I wanted to be honest if it's blanket honesty. Mm -hmm. um, so, we, we would talk about that, and, you know, there was really... You know, he, he, he at the end of the day wanted one thing removed um, and then at the end of the day said, all right, keep it. Um, it, just, it was just something around his health and, 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 you know, I mean, he was, I couldn't really argue with him because he was so raw and so just unedited with his stuff that if, if at the end of the day he wanted it out, I would have said, all right, because he didn't break my balls. And and um and and was fair with me and kind of understood that what I was trying to articulate as a director. Mm -hmm. um, so you know we've all, we've been cool. You know we you know I the thing about Fife is that like he reminds me of like my friends that I grew up with. So like outside of the filming and stuff like the work part of it, yeah. like I always just like felt like you know like I know this guy. Well I didn't know him, but like you know we just hit it off. Sure. You know. Uh, in that way and it is and it's like yo fight you know it's it's like I, you know like I was like I wanted to I wanted you know him to be happy and feel comfortable but I also knew that some of feeling comfortable would be understanding that you're gonna feel uncomfortable because it's it, you know particularly with his stuff and with his health stuff like he was like exposed himself you know um and and, and, and his wife and she's super shy and like you know he's letting me show this stuff about you know what he's going through in his life um and there's a you know i wanted to be sensitive to that um but 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 not short shrift the story mm -hmm. in a way so i'll let five answer when he first came to me about the movie you know i was kind of skeptic you know what i mean because i didn't want to really want to put try business out there like that mm -hmm. i could watch i could watch um you know mickey howard's unsung or <laughs> Little Wayne's behind the music and things of that nature all day because it's very interesting, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? As it just shows that as performers, as athletes, as celebrities in general, that we're human at the end of the day. Yeah. And at first, I didn't want to put myself out there, but it, could you, if you really look at the movie, you see where I was turning the corner as far as my health, and then also where it was kind of all bad. But then towards the end, like when we go to rehearsal, it was all good after the transplant or whatever. So I think that's the life part of the title of the movie. 
You know what I mean? And I'm I'm glad I was fearless in that way in order to represent it because usually I'm very, I wouldn't say I'm unapproachable, but I'm very discreet. I keep people at an arm's length because, you know, you don't know what people want out of you or trying to get out of you or whatever, but he came to me last and asked if I was interested in doing a documentary. I had to make sure the other three was already on board and they were, so it became, okay, well, who am I to say no? You know what I mean? But um, he made it very comfortable because, for one, he came to my house. They came to my house <clears throat> to record me. So being that I'm already at home, I felt at home. He's a jokester. He loves sports just like I do. I'm a fan of his work. You know what I'm saying? From um, Prison Break. I was about to say Prison Song. <laughs> That's crazy, right? <laughs> nah, but I'm a fan of his work from Prison Break to you know, how to learn in Boston public, whatever, you know what I mean? So I was like, wow, Michael Rappaport is really interviewing me in my crib. You know what I'm saying? Whereas he probably felt like, yo, this is my group right here. I can't believe this is even popping off. And then we're both Nick fans, so that made it even yeah. more, much more easier transaction. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it was fun. It was definitely fun. Okay, now, Michael. Hey. Hello. Hey. Question about, you know, there are several groups during that time of Tribe Called Quest. What was it specifically about them that drew you to them with all the creativity going on? Um, you know, the thing that drew me to Tribe that, that is that the, um, musically, there was a, um, uh, an emotional quality in their music. There was a vibrancy. In, in their music, there was um, in, 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 in their message or in their lyrics and their content, there was an inclusiveness, there was a sense of humor, there was surprises um, that you like what you know like funky diabetic like, oh what the f he's a what you know and <laughs> you know and, and um, even you know like in, in um, you know in, in like on Benita Applebaum I mean there was just such this youthful um, sort of free, free, this freeness to the music. And there was a consciousness, but it wasn't beating you over the head. I mean, it was really just like, um, you know, like walking around school and like listening to like all your friends like say things. Like, that's what like that album, that first album was like. It's like, you're down here and like they're talking about safe sex and like, oh yeah, then you're talking about like this girl and her ass. And then, you know, they're talking about like, talking about all these things that you can relate to mm -hmm. and anybody can relate to right and you know and the, the charisma and that that him Fife has and, and Q-Tip has as MCs you know I mean it was just like you were like like what is this you know mm -hmm. yeah it reminded me your rap style reminded me of Outkast as far as Andre 3000 and Big Boy the same tenuous type of relationship and I want to thank you for your ten and I want to thank you for showing the diabetes part of that, especially the transplant part, because I mean I choked up when you know it ended up being your wife. Yeah, thank you, thank you. you Don't know, choke so. up. Yeah, hey, so no, I'm not mad, but you know. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so good. Mm -hmm. Now, what was about Michael? I know you mentioned it before about why how you trusted him, but a lot of people have the same or they try to have the same ideas that you do just to get close. What was that spark that you said, okay? I trust this cat. I think he's going to do us good. Honestly, he's a New Yorker. New Yorkers can figure out each other in a jiffy. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. I think I'm a good judge of character for the most part. But because he's where I'm from, I knew he would understand me. I knew I would understand him. And like I said earlier, just being a Nick fan, Jet fan, or whatever it may be, just put the icing on the cake. Especially being that he's on the West Coast now, and I'm on the West Coast as well. You know, I'm not always yeah. going to run into the crazy Nick fan. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we went to the Nick Laker game year before last, and those are both my favorite teams. But at the end of the day, if you cut me, mm -hmm. I'm going to bleed royal blue and orange. <laughs> wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Unless Magic Johnson was on the court. Right. Well, see, now you're talking. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, but, I do. Yeah, I grew up a Laker fan until mm -hmm. Mark Jackson, who's now the coach of the Warriors, yes. was drafted by the Knicks. Mm -hmm. He knows what he knows the history. I know the history of the Knickerbockers. Right. It's not a good history as far as we're concerned, as far as championships go. But, so I had to go to State Warriors. Yeah. 
Well, at least there's a 75. That's yeah. earlier than us. I mean, that's um, more recent than us. But mm -hmm. um, once you bleed that orange and blue, you're going to bleed it for real, for real. And I think that's what made the transaction easy. And like I said earlier, he was at my crib doing this. So I was mm -hmm. already at home. We're playing Wii. Right. We're eating. <laughs> Wifey's cooking. I'm cooking. It's, you know, it was cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Messing around with his kids because they're sports fanatics. And it was all good. You know, it's it. There's history on it, and you know, and and there's perspective, and you can go back, you know, and and look at that time with a little bit of perspective, um, and you could go back and look at the golden era of hip hop with some, you know, reminiscing quality and a sort of a nostalgic quality, and you know, what what was spawned by from hip hop, from Cool Herc, from Grandmaster Flash, and so on and so on and so on and Tropical Quest is part of the culture today. You know, you see the T-Mobile T-Mobile girl sitting there with the white kid rapping fast. No one's batting an eye. It's just another commercial with hip hop in it. You hear black sheep, you know, with what are they, rats or something? Yeah. yeah. You yeah, know, like yeah, and yeah. it's it's fun. You know, you, you hear, you know, um you know, Dr. Dre beat a California love beat in commercials like, you know, Allen Iverson sports, like what they did, what Tribe Called Quest and all those other groups did is so, you know, Obama with, you know, dirt off your shoulders and, you know, Michelle Obama, um, you know, dancing with kids, you know, to hip hop beats. It's so important and it's so much a part of our everyday existence being around it and also to what you know when you see the rock the bell show it's not by it's not just the music coming on they, they bust their ass to put on a good show and I just was talking to be real from Cypress Hill and he was like you know I want to see the movie and he was just like you know on stage they were great and last year 2010 they were the best ones mm -hmm. and I was uh, you know like at this point I was like I'm done with travel of course but I was like they Kill it every time, you know. Right. So. And that was like the the rehearsals. I think made, is something that made them stand apart because I think Tip really had like an idea for what he wanted the show to look like, you know. And it was like putting that time in to to do the rehearsals and have, you know, you could tell. I think that set Tribe apart what, at those shows, those Rock the Bell shows. Like, yeah. You guys had a full whole performance. But with with nothing, no mm -hmm. special effects, no props, no nothing. It's just them on stage doing it, and that that takes. Mm -hmm. And yep. I'm yep. sure at some point, you know, there's going to be a diaper commercial with two, like a cute baby boy and a cute baby girl, and it's going to be Benita Applebaum, and I hope they get paid five million dollars, <laughs> just like the Doors have gotten paid off, you know, Honda commercials and Pink they Floyd. Should, it doesn't, and there's nothing selling out. There's no selling out. It's, it's like, no. you know, Benita Applebaum and Can I Kick It. These are f***ing parts, like Benita, you know, like, you know, like the the Door song Gloria. That's Benita Applebaum to us. You know, for me, that's the same thing. So I, I'd rather hear a commercial with Benita Applebaum, or you, you know, the choice is yours, or you know, uh, you know, Eric B for president, or a Bismarcky song. <laughs> there, there's no the commercialization. Good, the masses should see it. You know, who wants to be underground where it's just this tiny little thing? You could, you know, that's how you start. That drives you to start. But at the end of the day, you know, there's you. You should get paid.